Hello, if like me you started photographing the railways before the invention of digital cameras, you probably have hundreds of these things, perhaps even thousands, colour slides. In this video I'm going to show you how I change these slides into digital images. I will be showing you the equipment I use, plus the software and my working methods. This is a slide I'm going to be scanning today. It's of a class 31 I took in 1993. Now the first thing I always do when scanning a slide is to take it out of the old mount and remount it into a glass slide mount. I'm just going to give it a quick little blow with a blow brush to get any dust off. Now what do you recommend? Cleaned these uh, the glass mount with some cleaning fluid and a soft cloth. And pop it into the mount. These mounts clip together. Like so. Now the reason for doing this is because when you want to when you scan a slide you want to keep it as flat as possible to make sure the entire scan, the entire slide the scan is in focus. You want the slide to be completely flat to get a successful scan. That's just my experience. If you find scanning using the original mounts acceptable, then carry on with that. But I just, and through my experience, it's much better to use these glass mounts for scanning. You get a much more successful scan that way. This is the scanner I'm going to be using. It's a Nikon Cool Scan 8000. And these scanners are no longer in production, but you can uh, find second hand examples on eBay and places like that. Now these were quite expensive when they first came out, I think a few thousand pounds. But you can pick them up for probably five, six hundred pounds. I think I paid six hundred pounds for this one five, six years ago. But there are more modern uh, film scanners you can get as well. The only downside with using old scanners like this Nikon is that the original software no longer works because it was never updated. But you can use alternative software such as ViewScan, um, which does work with these scanners. So it's a, if you don't want to buy a new scanner and new software, it's a viable alternative. I've placed the slide in the, in the slide holder. I'm now going to feed it into the scanner, then we'll be ready to scan. This is the view scan software that I was talking about earlier. You've got various menus across the top. Most of them are fairly self explanatory, but I'll run through the most important things. Got tire scans file, that's pretty obvious. That's that's the scanner. LS eight thousand. Obviously if you have a different scanner that will come up differently or if you have more than one scanner. If we were scanning slide film, but you want to scan at the highest resolution you can and the highest bit rate you can. File number one, this is only really um, useful if you're scanning one more, more than one uh, slide at a time, but I'm only scanning one today, so I'll just leave that option as one. Preview resolution, you don't really need to worry about that. Scan resolution, scan at 4000 dpi, which is the maximum. So we can capture the maximum amount of detail. Rotation, you don't only need to worry about that if the um, when you've done the preview, the uh, image is not the right way around. 
don't really need to worry about many of these. Probably the most important um, thing you need to check is the fine mode. Make sure that up is on because that gives you the best quality scan that the, that the scanner can produce. So just make sure that's always ticked. The other thing I want to mention that you can save the presets in the file menu for scanning different types of uh, film. So I've got one set up for Fuji scans, um, one for, set up for 6 four by 4 scans, and one for K64, which is what I'm using today. So that, this will change the um, options that I've already set up. Okay, crop, you don't really need to worry about that. We sort that out when we do the preview. Now, under filters, you have the infrared clean. Now, this only works on E6 transparencies, such as Fujichrome and other similar films. It doesn't work with uh, Kodachrome transparencies. So if you're scanning a Kodachrome slide, this needs to be none. But you have op other options here if you're if you're scanning an E6 transparency. Uh, restore colours I'll leave on, reduce fading I'll leave on, these I don't generally use. You can sort these things out in uh, Photoshop afterwards. So colour balance I tend to turn off, because uh, again you can sort this out in uh, Photoshop after you've completed the scan. These are all the presets for the code of Chrome, which you don't really need to worry about. But there's other presets for other other sorts of films. Output, which is whether you're going to save the image. Scan size, don't really need to worry about it so much. And preferences, we can see here, but these aren't really that important. So what we're going to do now is uh, generate a preview before we uh, do the actual scan. Okay, that's the preview completed. Um, you can move these um, dashed lines to get the crop that you want. I tend to leave a bit of the film rebate around the outside, which I can crop off later in Photoshop. Um, this is the focus point that you can move back to different areas of the slide if you wish. But as long as the slide is flat, it shouldn't actually matter where this uh, focus point is. Uh, you don't really need to worry too much about the, uh, the colour and the brightness of the slot of the uh, image at this point because we'll, we'll sort all that out in uh, Photoshop after the uh, scan is completed. So if you're happy with the, uh, the crop and everything else, you can uh, go ahead and scan the image just by clicking the scan option down here, which I'll do now. Okay, the scan has now completed and we need to save the file. I always choose the TIFF option because you don't get any compression with the TIFF file. If you save it as a JPEG, the file will get compressed and you'll lose some quality. But with the TIFF file, that doesn't happen. I've created a folder where I'll keep all my scans from this uh, particular scanner with the obvious name. Now, I'm sure everybody out there has their own method of uh, creating names for images or creating file names to be more accurate. When it comes to railway images, I tend to use the locomotive number and the date it was taken as the file name. Whatever method you use, just make sure you're consistent with it because that will make it much easier to organise your images in the future and also find images you're looking for when you fold them away on a hard drive somewhere and you're trying to find something, it's going to be much easier if you have a consistent system of naming uh, image files. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the file name I want to use, which in this case is 31187, which I took on the 29th of the 5th, 1993. And click save. And you'll get a preview pop-up of the image. 
Now, as this is a Kodachrome uh, slide, you're going to get a lot of this dust and dirt and whatever on the slide because you can't use the automatic um, cleaning function of this uh, of the scanner. That's not really a big problem. We can clean all this up in Photoshop later. Thanks for watching. Look out for the next episode where I'll be going through my working methods in Photoshop to get to the final result. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. And please have a browse around and have a look at the other videos on my channel. If you like what you see, maybe you could subscribe. Thanks a lot.